Dear God, sorry I haven't written much lately. School started up and I guess things got started pretty fast. The first day at the bus stop was even crazy. Justin and Dean and JT were there and doing their usual. And then there was this new guy. At first, I didn't even notice. I was busy catching up with the guys again. I don't know why I didn't say anything to him. He was dressed a little different and nobody really talked to him. The truth is, I wasn't thinking about it. I was just thinking about my new classes, new teachers, well, all kinds of stuff. I couldn't help remembering what it was like when we first moved here. It wasn't that many years ago when I was at the bus stop by myself too. I remember thinking I'd never make any friends here. So the next day, I made sure to say hi. Carlos is okay. The first day he was doing stuff for registration, but we found out he's in a couple of my classes. It turns out he's into robotics. When I told him that JT and I had a team last year, it was pretty cool. God, I think you just sent a new friend. Thanks for helping me to see what needed to be done. Talk again soon, Lim. Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Kevin. I'm the family pastor here at Hope, and it's been a while since I've been here at Hope Kids. I sure have missed all of you, and since Miss Dana is on vacation this week, I am so happy to be back with you this week. Hey, are you guys ready for our new series in Hope Kids? Let's get ready for launch and boldly do what needs to be done. That's right, we're talking about initiative. And today, we start at the beginning of Nehemiah's story in Nehemiah chapter one. We discover that Nehemiah was working for a king when his brother brought sad news from the exiles living in Judah. When he heard about the devastation in Jerusalem, Nehemiah was heartbroken. Let's go to our true story from the Bible and see what Nehemiah did next. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapters 1 and 2. Over and over, the Israelites promised to be faithful to God, but over and over again, they turned away from Him. At last, God allowed enemy armies to take His people captive and carry them off to Babylon, nearly a thousand miles away. After 70 years, God allowed some of His people to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. But back in Babylon, now part of Persia, the rest of the Jews had made lives for themselves. In fact, a Jew named Nehemiah had become quite important. Greetings. I am cupbearer to the king. A cupbearer was like a bodyguard who checked to make sure that no one poisoned the king's food or drink. Nehemiah was likely a trusted advisor. Your Majesty, may I suggest the date pudding? But though it was nearly 150 years since the Israelites had left Jerusalem, Nehemiah's heart was still in his homeland. When his brother Hanani returned from his trip to Judah, Nehemiah had a chance for some news. Brother. How are the people left in Jerusalem? Some are still alive, but they're having a hard time. Oh no. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. The gates have been burned with fire. People are ashamed. That's terrible. A city without walls could never prosper. The people would always live in fear of being attacked. I'm sorry to bring such bad news. No, no, I'm, I'm glad you told me. Dismayed, Nehemiah sat down and wept. He couldn't even eat for several days. Instead, he poured his heart out to God. Lord, you are a great and wonderful God. See how your people are suffering. Please listen to me. I'm praying for the people of Israel. We Israelites have committed sins against you. We haven't obeyed the commands you gave to Moses. Nehemiah reminded God of the promise he made to his people. You said, if you people are not faithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me, I will bring you back. Lord, please pay careful attention to my prayer. 
Give me success when I bring my request to King Artaxerxes. For four whole months, Nehemiah prayed daily to God. He knew before taking action, he needed to listen and prepare. At last, he was ready. Your Majesty. Anyone who came before the king was supposed to appear happy. But for the first time, Nehemiah allowed his true feelings to show. Oh, why are you looking so sad? May you live forever? Why shouldn't I look sad? The city of my people has been destroyed, and fire has burned up its gates. The king could have been annoyed and ordered Nehemiah to be punished, but God moved his heart. Well, what do you want? Nehemiah prayed silently for the right words. Send me to Judah. Let me go to the city of Jerusalem. I want to rebuild it. The king frowned and glanced over at the queen. At last he said, hmm. How long will your journey take? When will you get back? Precisely as many moons as are required? Fair enough. Dismissed. Nehemiah turned to leave, but he knew there was more he needed for the job. If it pleases you, may I take some letters with me? I want to give them to the governors west of the Euphrates River. Then they'll help me to travel safely. Mm, done. Oh, and a letter to the caretaker of the royal park? So he'll give me logs for the wall and gates and a house? <laughs> what next? A whole escort of army officers and horsemen? That would be fantastic. Fine. All of it. Get on with it. God had given Nehemiah such favor with the king that he had everything he needed for his long journey to Judah. At last, Nehemiah had reached the city he dreamt of his entire life. Jerusalem. Though Nehemiah was overjoyed by the first glimpse of the city, it must have been difficult to see its crumbling, broken-down walls. So much work to be done. But Nehemiah didn't tell anyone his plan at first. On a bright, moonlit night, Nehemiah snuck out with only a few others to see the full damage to the walls. We have to know what we're up against. Nehemiah traveled by donkey. With a few trusted friends, they left the city through the broken valley gate. Let's head toward the Jackal Well. At last, Nehemiah got a clear picture of the devastation. Jagged piles of rock lay everywhere. The gates were gone with scorched gaping holes in their place. It's such a big job. Only God can do this. Nehemiah circled what was left of the wall, heading up the Kidron Valley and at last returning through the valley gate. The next morning, he called together the priests and nobles and officials. You know I've come to visit my people in Jerusalem, but that's not the only reason I'm here. Nehemiah gestured to the jagged remains of the wall, visible from where they stood. You can see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem has been destroyed. Fire has burned up its gates. Tell us something new. Come on, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Then people won't be ashamed anymore. Hmm, well, I mean, that's something to consider if you think about this. Um, Our grandparents tried that years ago. But God has been helping me. He gave me favor with the king. He'll help us complete the work. So who's in? Well, me. I'm in. Me too. Let's start rebuilding. God moved the hearts of the people to help Nehemiah. And together they began the gigantic job of repairing the walls and gates of Jerusalem. Wow, Nehemiah recognized that there was a need, but before he did anything, he prayed. Nehemiah knew whatever he would do, he would need God's help to accomplish it. Sometimes it's easy to see that something needs to be done, but think, oh, someone else will do it. But you can be a part of the solution and take initiative, no matter how young, how old, how short, or how tall, God took the initiative by sending Jesus to show us how much he loves us. When we see a need and choose to do something about it, we reflect God's image in us. Through our initiative, others can see God's love for them. Now let's sing our worship song together. Stand up to your feet and let's sing.
Before we go, let's look at our Bible verse for this month. Let's say it together, ready? One, two, three. Work at everything you do with all your heart. Work as if you were working for the Lord. Colossians 3, 23. Well, thanks for joining us today, everybody. I had so much fun being back here with y'all. As we leave today, our hope for you is that as you go about your week, you would be on the lookout for ways to take initiative and help to be a part of the solution. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for today. Thank you for loving us and taking the initiative, Lord, to, to have a relationship with us by sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. Help us to be like Nehemiah who saw a need and didn't wait for someone else, but took the initiative to help. Lord, help us to be more like him. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a great day.